brothers and sisters, today I want to talk about fruitfulness. Amen? Amen. We are going to read from the book of Luke, chapter 8. And this is the parable of the sower. It says, verse 1, After this, Jesus traveled about from one town and village to another, proclaiming the good news of the king kingdom of God. The twelve were with him, and also some women who had been cured of evil spirit and diseases, Mary called Magdalene, from whom seven demons had come out, Joanna, the wife of Chusa, the manager of Herod's household, Susanna, and many others. These women were helping to support them out of their own means. Amen? These women were helping to support out, out of their own means. Amen. Amen. While a large crowd was gathering and people were coming to, to Jesus from town after town, he told this parable. A farmer went out to sow his seed. As he was scouring the seed, some fell along the path. It was tram trampled on and the birds ate it up. Some fell on the rocky ground, and when it came up, the plants with, withered because they had no moisture. Other the seed fell among thorns, which grew up with it and choked the plants. Still, other seeds fell on good soil. It came up and yielded a crop, and hundred times more than what was sown. When he said this, he called out, Whoever has ears to hear, let them hear. hear. His disciples asked him what this parable meant. He said, The knowledge of the secret of the kingdom of God has been given to you. But to others... I speak in parables so that though seeing, they may not see. Though hearing, they may not understand. Brothers and sisters, I will stop my reading there. So it is possible to hear and not understand. And to see, to open big your eyes and not see. It is possible. Amen. Amen. What we understand here is that the seed is perfect. Amen. Can someone say the seed is perfect? The seed is perfect? So the problem is the soil. The seed is perfect, but the problem is the soil. Yes. And then we just learned that the seed is the word of God. The Bible says that the kingdom of God comes by hearing. But be very careful about how you hear. Many people were around Jesus. They heard the same thing. But only few were able to understand after it was explained to them. Hallelujah. I understand now that you can have the Bible. For years and years and years, you read, someone read to you, but yet you do not understand. When I was young, I lacked reading the Bible. I don't know how many times I read the Bible. Mostly the Old Testament. But now I know why. Because of stories. The story of Joseph. I did not get a clue of what the meaning of what I was reading. I read the Bible like I read any other novel. And so many people do the same until today. Brothers and sisters, we learn that transformation, true transformation of your heart comes from hearing the word of God. True repentance comes from hearing the word of God. Salvation as well comes from hearing the word of God. That same word you have been hearing for years 
Sometimes you turn your back to the word, sometimes you come back to the word. That same word one day, a secret that is in it will be revealed and then poof, it changes you. When the Bible says, I was poor, now I am rich. I was weak, and now I am strong. We always proclaim that. But you proclaim that when you are poor, evidently poor. And that's the time you proclaim you are rich, because that's what the word of God says. So you can come here, you proclaim, I am poor, and now I am rich, until you turn blue, and then you will become poor. And then one day, you proclaim the same thing, and then there is a change in your life. Because the word of God has life. So I encourage everyone who knows and understands that there is life in the word of God. Keep proclaiming what the word of God says. Keep saying, when you are sick, proclaim that you are healed. Because that's what the word of God says. Hallelujah. I proclaim that I'm saved while I'm still living in sin. That's when the transformation happens. It is the contrary of anything else. Because the kingdom of man is totally different. Nothing supernatural. My words listened by someone who does not believe, who says, that guy is just crazy. What are you talking about? Hallelujah. The world of man is different, is complicated. Yeah. Yeah, you follow what the man in power is doing and is saying. When we have this majority, they change all the laws, and then all of a sudden, we are following and doing something contrary to what we believed and we fight for yesterday. Amen. Hallelujah. Those are men's principles. They depend on power. In some countries, you even die if you do not follow. You like it or you don't, you have to follow some principles. If you don't, you die. The kingdom of God does not operate the same way. It starts slowly, like a week, and then like a seed that you plant. It is weak. You can trample on it and then kill it. I mean, anything can happen to it, to it. But yet, there is power and there is life and life abundantly in that little thing. Amen. That is the kingdom of God. Yes. I am weak, but I proclaim that I'm strong. If it does take root, Depending on the soil of your heart, you will become strong. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes. It is all about the soil. Hallelujah. Amen. It starts slowly, like a seed, and then slowly, slowly transforms until the life in it overwhelms you. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. But every Christian knows what I'm talking about, knows about the power of God. But most of the time, we're just in doubt. Because your eyes are open big and then can only see your circumstances, regardless of how holy you are. Let's take the example of John the Baptist. John the Baptist was a special man. Even when he was in the womb of his mother, he was already in connection with Jesus. Amen? Amen? I don't know how many people like him. So he knew God before he was even born. Hallelujah. Amen. Us, <laughs> you were born. They brought you to church because you, you're young. When you become a teenager, they drag you to church. And then by the grace of God, one day you will know Jesus. John the Baptist, it was before he was born. But yet, after proclaiming 
after opening the way for Jesus, after accomplishing his mission, baptizing people. He got thrown in prison. Ah, he started saying, Jesus, is that you really I was talking about? Because I'm in prison right now. I am suffering hell here. Where are you? Are you powerful? John the Baptist. So I understand you. You have the same questions, especially when you are not satisfied about something or when you're suffering from something. You ask yourself, God, where are you? Am I the only one person? Hmm? Two. <laughs> All of you are holy. <laughs> you ask yourself, God, where are you? Are you powerful? Aren't you the Alpha and Omega? How come I just lost my job? I even gave my first fruit. Really? <clears throat> Some are praying, can you just make me beautiful right now? Hmm? So I don't have to go to the gym. I don't have to do this and that. Just right now. Remove everything that is not perfectly aligned. Eh? Remove here and put there, you know, what I'm talking about. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, 2019 is a year of fruitfulness. Yeah. But in order for you to bear fruit and good fruit, you have to understand God's principles. You have to know God's principles. You have to follow God's principles. Amen. That is the secret for 2019. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Jesus came like a baby. He was born like a baby. But he suffered. He was rejected. And even died on the cross. The king came from heaven. But he triumphed. By going through hell, by, go, by being beaten, tortured, and killed. You have to understand that resurrection does not happen if there is no death. Mm -hmm. That is a principle. I can explain it another way. With Jesus, the way to be rich is the, the way to give away your money. I know it does not make any sense. But that's a God's principle. The way up is the way down. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> you find yourself when actually you lose yourself. Amen. You live when you die. Amen. Amen. The way to be strong and in power is the way to be a humble servant who will clean his servant's feet. Amen. That is the way up with Jesus. Amen. Do you want to grow and be powerful? That was a question. Yes. Amen. Amen. So welcome to the kingdom. Amen. Amen. But are you prepared to suffer? We all want to grow. We all want to be powerful. We all want everything. But are you prepared to suffer? Yeah, Amen. Amen. I know and I'm sure, very sure, that it is with joy and expectation that you say, God, you are the provider. But I don't want to be broke. Okay, it's only myself then. <laughs> we always say, God, you are the pro especially when they give you something. Oh, praise the Lord, you are the provider. Yeah. Would you say the same thing when you are completely broke? You don't even have gas to go to church. Yeah. Would you say, God, you are the provider? Yes. That is what I'm telling you to do. It's God's principle. Yes. 
When you are weak, proclaim you strong. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes. Oh, I want to be like Pastor GB. I understand. <laughs> but are you ready to go through the hell I went through? Are you ready? Are you? It comes with. You cannot have me without that hell. <laughs> Hallelujah. It goes together. Do not see the exterior. It covers something. If you like what you see, there is something you don't see that you must like first. Hallelujah. God's principle is complicated. We heard the testimony of uh, um, Sister Akir, the wife of Pastor Joseph, when, while they were still in the church here. She testified one day. She was broke completely. They did not have gas. Well, they had gas to go to church, but definitely not to go back home. And it was on a Sunday. When they were preparing to come to church, they got calls to pick up some people. So you're not even going straight, right? You're going this way before you get to church. So they had anxiety. Are we going to get to church? That was the only problem they had. But they did not know how to go home. You know, one problem at a time. Just let's get to church and then we'll see. So they got here, and then the wife was praying in this corner. She did not have a mic, so no one was, knew actually what she was praying for. And then she prayed, prayed, prayed. I'm pretty sure I know what she was praying for. Now that I made it to church, how am I going to go home? Amen. Amen. And then before she finishes her prayer, Someone stopped her, a tap on the shoulder. Sister, God sent me to give you something. It was a large sum of money. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. Right there. I'm, I'm just telling you, proclaim your rich when you broke. Yeah. And trust that God will come and then will help you. She was on her knees. She was not asking for money. No one knew anything until she gave the testimony. Right here. Yes, we, we, want, we sing, we jump. God, you are a way maker. But are you ready to go to jail? Are you? You are a healer. Hmm? Are you ready to be sick? Are you? Christian, are you afraid, afraid to be sick? Why they know Jesus is a healer? Hallelujah. I have a friend I minister to. She is not Christian. She belongs to a different faith. And always she complains. Because she prays, she prays, she prays but does not see the hand of God move into her problems. I know why. But we have a long way to go. Amen? Amen. If you pray with expectation, but your eyes are big and focusing on the expectation, instead of focusing on God, yes. you are not going to have anything. Because the motivation is wrong. And God does not respond to those kind of prayers. Everyone that I see, even here, all of us, we're looking for a better position, a better life, a better health, a better wealth, or just a smell of it. It's fine. Oh, and you feel good. We are all looking for that. Hallelujah. But are we prepared to go down in order to go up? Are we prepared for that? 
Fruitfulness is about that. Brothers and sisters, nothing will fall from the sky. I'm warning you. Yeah. <laughs> nothing. But those who will understand will experience fruitfulness in 2019. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The, the, the word of God said earlier, those who have ears hear. It is possible you have uh, hear, uh, ears, but you cannot hear. That's the reason I'm talking about this. So 2019 will, will bring things, but you just have to understand. When we proclaim the 2019, a year of fruitfulness, uh, that, that night I got a vision. I was so excited about it. Amen? Amen. And the more I was dreaming about it, you see these pictures? Amen? Amen. We see the fruits, how they are good. You want, you want to eat them? Amen? Amen? So the more I was looking at the picture in my dream, the more God was showing me something different. Yeah. Yeah, I share that with Apostle. Fruitfulness, but God is showing me something else. God was showing me the way to fruitfulness. Amen. God was showing me everything from the beginning to fruitfulness. How you plant, how you water, how you prune, all these things. And fruitfulness was just at the end. And the next day I dream again because I wanted this to be mine. And then God brought me again from the beginning. How you cultivate with sweat and everything. And then you get to fruitfulness. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The parable we just read here showed us that there were different kind of people. All of them were working, planting. Hmm? All of them. The seed went here, the seed went there, the seed went there, and the seed went there. At the end of the day, they were tired because of the work that has been done. But if the soil is not the right soil, there is one person who will receive nothing, another person who will receive just a little bit, and then there will be another one who will be fruitful in receiving. Hallelujah. So, in 2019, we will teach on how to be fruitful. Be excited about fruitfulness, but learn how to be, how to get there. Hallelujah. Because I have seen the process, I will share the process the same way I have seen it. Amen. So, we will teach how to plant seeds. Because if you don't have the right soil, you have nothing. Hallelujah. Yeah, right. Amen. Amen. We will teach on how to plant properly. We will also teach that you have been planted, but some of us think they are being buried because they don't see anything. So we will teach about that too. We will teach you that being planted, planting was not your final destination. Yes, right. uh -huh. That was the first step only. Right. We still have more steps to go. Amen. So if you haven't seen anything yet, that was the first destination. And planting is not your final destination. Amen. Because our God is a God of increase. Yes. His will is for you to prosper. Hallelujah. Amen. We will teach about the importance of watering. If you do not water, it's going to die. It's going to die. We will teach about this position that is between dying, which is planting, and increasing, which is harvest. What do you do in the middle? We will be talking about all of that. Those who have ears will hear. And then we'll be able to be fruitful. Amen. So this parable, coming back to our reading today, is rich, very rich. Because the word of God 
is life. Hallelujah. Today I pray that you really open your heart to receive because it's very important. So do not miss the grace of God. Amen? Amen. So the Bible says that the crowd was assembled around Jesus and then he began to speak. He spoke in a way that very few only would be able to understand. And then he explained why. He said, many people are coming, but they are only looking for miracles. They are not there to be changed, to be challenged, to be transformed. They just want a miracle. Brothers and sisters, if you do not decrease, God will not increase you. You have to decrease in order to experience increase. Remember, the way up is the way down. On your way to the palace, there is a pit waiting for you. Are you willing to go into the, into the pit? Experience the pit in order to get to the palace, are you? So here Jesus identified four types of soil. The first one, he said, some fell along the path where people passed by. The second one fell on a rocky ground. The third one uh, fell among the thorns. And the last one fell on good soil. Amen? You understand all these kind of soils? And I'm asking you today, what kind of soil are you? Are you? Check your heart. Check. What kind of soul are, are you? I will help you. The first one. So the first person hears, hears but does not understand. And Jesus says, when the devil comes, he steals the word. So it's a person who is probably in church today. The person hears but does not understand. Many people come, listen to the church, but it is the disposition of your heart that will make you understand, embrace a word, Amen. and change. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Your heart is the soil. Yeah. Yes. Amen? If your heart is full of unforgiveness, you will hear, but you will not understand. If your heart is full of bitterness, revenge, you will hear, but you will not understand. If your heart is full of unbelief or jealousy, you will hear the message, like everyone, but you will not understand. Some people think, oh, you know, I went to school, I finished university, I have a diploma. You may have a diploma, but you will not understand. You will hear like everyone. You will probably hear more quickly than anyone. You will hear, I'm not done yet. You, you, you guess what I'm going to say. But yet, Jesus. you will not understand. Amen. The Bible explains why. Because the devil will remove the substance from what you heard. Yes, you got the word, but the devil will come and remove the substance from that word. So life is gone. Hallelujah. Amen. The word of God gives life. If there is no life, if there is no substance in the word, there is no life. Some are here because they are just trying to satisfy the people who invited them. Yeah, I will go to church. In reality, you have one foot in and one foot out. The Bible is trying to tell us here that the devil has the right to steal. Amen? Verse 12 says, Those along the path are the ones who hear, and then the devil comes and takes away the word from their hearts, so that they may not believe and be saved. My understanding is easy for me. There is no other way out. 
The word of God gives life, but if it fails in a heart that does not want to understand, the devil will steal. The word does not say that the devil might steal. Amen? Or perhaps the devil may come and negotiate or steal a little bit. The devil says, the, the Bible says, Jesus said the devil will come and take the word. Jesus can stop the devil. Am I right? Yes, he has the power over the devil. But he says that the devil will take. That means Jesus will not stop the devil. As a conclusion, the devil is authorized to come and take it away because you are not serious. Because you're playing a certain game. Hallelujah. Amen. And here is another problem in the book of John, chapter 10, verse 10. It says the devil comes to steal and destroy. So when the devil comes, to, he does not steal the word only. There is a difference between stealing and destroying. When I come to steal in your house, let's say I want to steal the TV, I steal the TV, but if my mission as well is to destroy, I destroy your couch, I de so you, there is nothing left you can use. Hallelujah. So you had a small problem like this? Your fiancé called off the wedding. You grow resentment in your heart. And before you know, the devil comes, steals the word that you heard at church, and provoke chaos in, in your life. Joy is gone. Peace is gone. Welcome to bitterness. Welcome to resent resentment. Hallelujah. You started being irate for any tiny little thing. Sister, you will just sit there. Hey! <laughs> you push away your friends. You become a person who is not approachable because you wears your problem. Yeah. And you do not know how you, you got there. Yeah. I had a cousin. She was getting older. All the other ladies were married, but she was not. She was beautiful, but it happened, there was no one coming around. She was older than me, really. So, I had two images of her, before and after. So before, she was, oh my goodness. She will clean everything, and if you're still standing there, she will clean you too. <laughs> Nothing was good enough for her. I mean, going to her house was, oh, uh, why, why am I here? <laughs> huh? yeah. No joy, nothing, and you could tell. She was skinny. I mean, all the muscles were talking. <laughs> there was no joy in her. I do not remember seeing her laugh even a day. Let's talk after. And then she met this guy. I honestly don't know how. <laughs> because it's not like a small problem. Today the devil takes your joy away. Tomorrow the devil takes your peace away. You are sick for nothing. I mean, this morning, your finger is hurting. Tomorrow, you, 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 I mean, there is no life. And this guy came to her life like boom, like light. And then I saw my, my cousin completely different. She had gained weight. She looked even beautiful. You come to a house, she will run, she will look for things. You, if you go home with food, that's okay, please. A different person. Just like that. What happened? It's still the same person, but the person changed. Something happened in her. That's what the Word of God can do to you too. Amen.
Do not hold resentment. Unforgiveness will kill you. Unforgiveness will kill you. We just learned all the kind of soil. The seed that fell into thorns, the Bible does not say will die, it will grow. But how can you grow when around you, if you want to grow this way, something pokes you, and then you go this way, right? So this is a seed that is growing funny. Because there is no way you can stand. It pokes you, you go this way. It pokes you, you go this way. You become ineffective. Hallelujah. God will not stop the devil. When your heart is not right, when you are holding on resentment, grudges, unforgiveness, bitterness, revenge, it's not happening. The devil likes that kind of juicy opportunity. Today he takes the joy and then he comes back tomorrow. The devil, the devil is home, even though you're here in church. Hallelujah. Amen. Principles. God will not stop the devil to steal your joy because of a principle. You have to work on your heart and then you will see everything else falls into place. Principles. Hallelujah. Amen. So when you are in church, listen and pay attention. Do not be here like I said last week. But your mind is shopping at Cross Iron. <laughs> Everything I say does not even enter. The mind is preoccupied. You doing math. When I ask you, 12 multiplied by 7, no, I don't know. But when I start preaching, oof, you can divide, you can multiply, no problem. <laughs> you are distracted, and the devil is very good at distracting. When I started uh, taking interest into uh, uh, preaching, long time ago, at home, my wife's young sister, at, at night, I would just turn off the, turn off the TV, oh and then I would just preach, yeah. read the word. But as soon as I start, my, my wife's young, younger sister will sleep <laughs> while sitting. She sleeps. And then I said, this is not normal. But if I, when I'm done, if it takes me an hour, I'm done. And she will watch the TV for hours before going to bed. But during that time, she's gone. I remember one time I said, okay, you, you will stand the entire time. Because if you stand, it will be difficult to sleep. Hallelujah. The devil distracts, takes away the, the substance. It is for that reason we have eaten in the beginning of every service. We pray, we worship, we, we get into the atmosphere so that when we start the word, it goes where it's supposed to go. If we do not do that, there will be chaos. The word will be dead. You won't even remember what I preached. It does happen sometimes spiritually. We, we feel that we are under attack. And then we will see some people here coming and giving a word of life. That word is not a person who wants to be seen. No. It's a person on a, miss on a mission. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. So let's talk about the second ground. Chapter, uh, verse 13 says, Those on a rocky ground are the ones who receive the word with joy when they hear it but they have no root. They believed for a while, but in the same time, of, in a time of testing, they fall away. Okay, this is Jesus talking. It's not me. Amen? Amen. The taller a building is, the deeper the foundation is too. A tree that is really, really high has 
uh, root deep in there to stand. Hallelujah. So, a rocky ground does not allow roots to grow. This person, the second person, Jesus said, the person heard the word. The person is excited when they hear the word of God. They manifest joy. But the Bible says they lack roots. They cannot grow roots, which means they lack persistence. Because a word must come on top of another. We preach on Sunday, you come on Tuesday, they bombard you a little more, you come on Wednesday, you get a little more, it piles up. Consistency is going to make that word, the roots to come out. Hallelujah. Expectancy, expectations of God transforming your life, it's going to make the root to go deeper and deeper. Being ready to be challenged and transformed is a person who is ready to listen to what the word is saying and opens up to the challenge. It makes the root to grow, to grow a little more. If you attend one service, and you're watching your watch every two seconds, your roots will now grow. So in 2020, we don't wanna, wanna have a fruitfulness again. It's for 2019. So open up, listen, grow, and take advantage of what God has given us. Maybe we'll come back to fruitfulness in 15 years. If you're still alive. <laughs> Hallelujah. So it's now. Amen. Amen. When a word comes on top of another, on top of another, today you eat fruit, tomorrow you eat uh, chocolates, and all the things you guys uh, like, and then you grow, and then you become strong, and then something happens. If you eat rice every single day, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> you, you need so many things. You need word, word of encouragement. You need things. You need to live. Yes. Hallelujah. Yeah. That causes the roots to grow, the roots to expand, the roots to go deep. If your roots are deep, then you become stronger, and then you have something you can do. Hallelujah. Amen. It is when you allow a word to come on top of another, you allow multiple source of information, you involve yourself, and then you can say, oh, I hear God talking to me. Because all of those things will turn off the world. That is very noisy. And then you can hear God talking to me. This is a confirmation of what I heard on Tuesday. And then today I'm at front line. They, it's God talking to me. Amen. Thank God I receive it. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You will never receive from God if you don't have roots. Hmm? Imagine a tree without roots. When it's a little windy, the tree is in trouble. It's in trouble. It's trying to stay. It's in trouble because there is no roots. The same thing happened to you. Brothers and sisters, you cannot build a house in one shot. It's one stone, one brick after another. Slowly, slowly, slowly. There is no rush in things of God. Hallelujah. When you are not persistent, the Bible says when persecution occurs, you are gone. You are gone. As soon as you are not chosen to sing on a Sunday, Hallelujah. As soon as your husband says something, or just gives his own opinion. As soon as someone tells you no, it's not your turn. You are offended. As soon as a friend is chosen, and not you, it becomes an occasion 
to go down. Just a tiny little thing. Brother, we want everyone to sit on this side. But no, we want people to sit on this side. I am offended. This is not a joke. I know a person who left the church just because they told them, uh, brother, we want everyone to sit on this side. The person went back home immediately, very offended. Hallelujah. And us as leaders, sometimes we have a tough job. We have a tough job. Amen. Amen. Persistence. The, the Bible says this category of pe- people, they do not miss church. They listen to the word. They are excited. When they hear people say hallelujah, they jump. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. But there is no persistence. So all of that for me is just emotion. Yeah, emotion. I'm not impressed by that. I'm not. You were distracted, you were shopping, and then you hear hallelujah, hallelujah. (laughs) It's just emotion, you are not a serious person. When the first tribulation comes, you down. You are down. Hallelujah. I know this is difficult, but fruitfulness requires us to change the way we're doing things. To change the way we're thinking. Our approach should change completely. And then we align ourselves. Amen? You were probably hoping for me to preach prosperity. (laughs) Amen? But God is saying, go to the beginning. Planting, pruning, watering, and then you'll get fruitfulness. Hallelujah. The third person, Jesus says in chapter four, uh, verse 14, the seed that fell among thorns stands for those who hear. But as they go on their way, they are choked by life's worries, riches and pleasures, and they, they, they do not mature. So the thorns are the worries of this world. Will I get married? Will I be able to buy new furniture? When is this suffering going to stop? You heard the the word, you love God, you come on a Tuesday, you come on Wednesday, but worries are very important. They, They occupy your mind all the time. I'm 35 now. Will I get married one day? Eh? Menopause is within reach. God, can you see this? Hallelujah. This person, the seed fell into thorns. When the thorns grow, they choke it. Brothers and sisters, that's the image I was giving you. They choke it. The Bible does not say the seed is killed. No. You are alive. You come on Wednesday, on Friday. So some days your prayer will move mountains. And some other days you won't. Because you grow and the thorns poke you, you change the position, pokes you, you change again, you are ineffective. You look funny. You look like a monster. (laughs) You are completely ineffective. (coughs) Sorry. Even though you come to church, even though you pray, one day you will pray for a person, the person is healed, the next 100 times, nothing happens. Because your mind is preoccupied by the things of this world. This group of people, they put more effort to pray, to do everything, they go to the prison ministry. They cannot miss a Sunday, but they are worries, they they have many worries about the things of this world. Some of them, not all of them though, 
They are preoccupied by the latest Gucci dress. It is here. When I get my money, this Gucci dress, I, I, I need to buy this Rolex watch or whatever. Brothers and sisters, tell your neighbor, there is better than Valentino. <laughs> there is better than Valentino. Hallelujah. In heaven, there will not be any Oprah show. Nothing. Or oh, Carly Jenner Instagram post. Zero. Hallelujah. Amen. Trump streets. No. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, don't be too much preoccupied by the things of this world. Amen. They will say here. Amen. Here. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I just learned by my wife yesterday that a pastor who brought her to Jesus and who was really the person who, who brought me to the faith. Past, he was younger than me. I have never seen a person living right in his young age than this person. We all pass one day. You don't have time. I was saying in 10, 15 years, maybe you won't be here. Maybe I won't be here. No one knows what will happen tomorrow after tomorrow after tomorrow. I would have never thought that this young man who loved Jesus this much wouldn't be alive today. When he used to come to my house, I was not saved at that time. My wife was. But I was living right my way. <laughs> so I, I listen a little bit to what you're saying. And then I said, no. I judge you before I listen to you. The young man will come and they will go in the garden to talk while I'm, I'm watching TV. And then often and often and often again. Until one day I listened and then there we go. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We are preoccupied by the things of this world. What did Trump say? What is the last Marco Cole's outfit? I need to see that. Even in the church, people are texting others. Send a picture. Some people are shopping, even here. <laughs> even here. The opening beyond the rock or all these websites, they're checking. Here in church. Hallelujah. In heaven, there won't be any marriage. I mean, nothing. And praise the Lord, no credit cards. <laughs> nothing. All these things will stay here. Yes. Don't let the devil occupy your mind with things of this world. Do not let God do that. Yes, you come to church, you do all of these things. But because your mind is at cross iron, you belong to the third category of people. They are ineffective. One day they are effective, the second they are not. One day they are in fire, the second day they are not. In the end, you are ineffective. One leg in and one leg out means both legs out. Hallelujah. Amen. The Bible says, seek first the kingdom of heaven. And everything else, including Valentino bags, will be added on to you. Amen. Hallelujah. Some don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Even myself. <laughs> Matthew chapter 6, verse 26 to 27 says, Look at the birds. They don't plant or harvest or store food in barns. For your heavenly Father feeds them. Amen. Hallelujah. In winter, he feeds them. In summer, he feeds them. In the desert, he feeds them. Hallelujah. Amen. And aren't you far more valuable to him than they are? This is God talking. You are more valuable to me than the birds. Yeah. But yet, I feed them. In season or out of season, I feed them. Yeah. Can any one of you, by just worrying, add a single hour on their life? So, your worries will not change anything. We not add anything. 
Don't be too much concerned about what your spouse said or did not say or he did not come home. Don't, don't be too concerned about that. Take everything, put it in the hands of the Lord, and then we will see. Hallelujah. If your wife is, is depressed because of any reason, because they were not able to buy, I don't know what, eh, Kylie Jenner lipstick. <laughs> hmm? If she's depressed by that, she's a pagan. <laughs> Hallelujah. She's a pagan. Because the Bible says, seek first the kingdom of God. And then all the lipstick you want will be added on to you. I'm serious. When you, you, you spend your time seeking first the kingdom of God, hmm? Valentino bags have no meaning for you. Nothing, zero. Bags, or oh, without any bag, you don't care. You will go to church anyways. So seek first the kingdom of God. When you're asking God, God give me this, God give me that, and God is saying, seek me first. Brothers and sisters, when you are on your knees and you're praying, oh God, I hope I will get this, God is, is responding back. Amen? Seek me first. Hallelujah. So, fruitfulness we're talking about, I'm warning you, is not a small little thing, it's a major thing. It will require some of, the, on, on, some of us to stop this frantic search of looking very good. Everyone has to see me. It's me. Hallelujah. Did you see me this Sunday? What they mean, did you see how I look? Hmm? Did, you, did you see my watch? How many people were looking at me? Fruitfulness will ask you to change all of that. Some want to look good even in their dreams. They, uh, it's terrible. Hey, looking good is, is good. Right? You, you have to. But if the appearance is all that is in, on your mind, that's really terrible. Hallelujah. So fruitfulness will require you to switch things a little bit. But please, look good, okay? Okay? But... Don't be preoccupied 24 hours by that. Amen. Fruitfulness will require you to bring to the cross all your problems, all your worries. Some people, they sleep with their worries. They wake up with their worries. They go to work with their worries. Hmm? Where do you think the road rage comes from? That's right. wow. eh? You just pass someone... Done, 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 done. He passed me. So what? Eh? And then they are ready to kill. They can kill you. They can literally kill you. I, I saw those things on YouTube. You horn, even by accident. Oh, man, what did you just do? Because the guy in front, it's done. What do you think makes them to become crazy like that? It's just the worries of this life. That is what it is here. Yeah. And then when you horn, uh, yeah, you just touch somewhere you should not touch. And then they become crazy. Yeah. Yeah. What's going on? What happens? Some, when the police stops them for one reason or another, they become completely crazy. They fight. They want to kill the policemen until they shoot them. What's going on? If someone stops you for one reason or another, just stop. It happened to me. Hmm? Hey, I have almost zero tickets, uh, traffic ticket or any kind of ticket. I pay them often, but they are not mine. Okay? <laughs> Hallelujah. 
They are not mine. <laughs> but what you have to do, you know, I was driving in my neighborhood, and I was in a rush, I guess, and then this light turned, was about to turn red, so it turned yellow. I had time to stop. But something told me, just, just go in, just go. It, it's yellow anyways. Right. Yeah, I passed. And then there was another crazy person behind me who passed as well. I said, no way, that, that was red for them. Because sometimes you pass and then you, you just, you saw something you should not see. So it happened to me. But the crazy guy behind me was a policeman. I, I just saw the colors, I mean, all kinds of colors, green, yellow, you see them all. Ah. I said, I'm going to be pulled over for the first time. So the guy stopped behind me, and this time, usually they take forever to come to you. He did not. So he came right away uh, outside, he came to my window. Hmm. I, I, I was frightened. I said, okay, wow, what's going on? So he said, sir, do you know why I stopped you? I said, yes, I do. Uh, I'm sorry. I had time to stop. But I made a wrong decision. Honestly, I, I did that on purpose. I had time to stop. He said, you know what? I like you very much. Just go. Yeah. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, this is a cry from me to you. Change your thinking. Don't let all the worries of the world invade you. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Some are still thinking about this husband who left them. Or this fiancé who called off a wedding. Let them go, brothers and sisters. Let them go so that God can replace them. Amen. You're still holding on something that has left you. Eh? Let it go. Yes, smile. And everyone can see the smile on you. Amen. Hallelujah. How do you think you're going to attract uh, uh, other people? Hmm? It's by smiling, by being nice by displaying the spirit of God that is in you. Amen. Let them go. Amen. Oh, I don't have children. <laughs> Hallelujah, my sister. I don't have children. So what? Hmm? Sarah was three, four, five times your age. She did not have children. But God had called her to, to multiply. Hallelujah. Amen. And she did. So, don't be too much concerned about what you have or what you don't have. Yeah, come on. Because you're choking the word. The word is alive, you are able to preach, but there is no effectiveness. Because the seed, you're choking it. Hallelujah. Amen. The Lord also speaks about the riches and pleasures of this world. Hallelujah. Their desire you have to have always more, more than anyone, accumulation of goods. That's what the Lord is talking about. You want to buy the, ne the, the a new jewelry. You, you already have space. I mean, I don't know how you manage all of these things. It's full. You went from one drawer to two to three. Every time you have to travel, you need a, a, a bag just for your jewelry. <laughs> Hallelujah. You need a bigger car. You need to buy this. You need to buy that. Stop. Yeah. Stop. And I can hear your bank account saying, Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Uh, Let me finish by talking about the last one. The good earth is when God comes first. Proverbs 4.23 says, Keep your heart more than anything else. So do not be disturbed by circumstances of life. Hallelujah. Resist to tempt temptation. Psalm 25, 22 says, Bring your burden to the Lord and he will take care of you. He will not permit the godly 
to slip and fall. He will not permit the righteous to be shaken. He will not permit. Yes, amen. Permit. Hallelujah. Amen. Circumstances will come to shake you, but God will not permit them to shake you. The devil will come to steal the word in you, but God will not permit the devil to steal your word. Do you understand? Yes. Because in other circumstances, God will watch what the devil is doing. The devil will come steal and destroy. But here it says, when you cast all your burdens to him, he will not permit anything to distract you. Amen. Deuteronomy chapter 8 verse 17 said, The word of God says that you are more than a conqueror. Hallelujah. For me it says there is no victory without the Lord. Amen. Amen. So in the name of Jesus, you can conquer. You can win. You can prosper. You can have a victorious life just by making the right choice. Hallelujah. Amen. Let me tell you, you have in you more power that is needed to get what you need. In you, you have more power to get what you need. Hallelujah. You have more than what is needed to get what you need. That's what I'm trying to say. Amen. But if you do not conquer, if you do not win, that means you are now using that power that is in you efficiently. The last person is a person who receives the word of God in their heart. They meditate the word. They attend prayer meetings. They add on one word another word. They add knowledge on top of another knowledge. Yeah. They love God and they love his people. Hallelujah. Amen. They do not fight their spouses. Even when the spouse is doing something that is not right. They don't fight them. They pray for them. Amen. They display joy Amen. when something is not going right. They do not talk back. Even when they are provoked. Hallelujah. Amen. Give it a try. Please, give it a try. Even for two weeks, please. And then we will see. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then we will see. I understand if I ask you to that from now on, that's how you're going to live. It may be difficult. <laughs> give it a try for two weeks. <laughs> Bring to the cross the burden. Do not respond back when someone provokes you. It's choking the word of God in you and making you ineffective. Good. Hallelujah. You want to bear much fruit? That's the way. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I would like to finish by asking you to stand up. You can close your eyes. We have seen today four categories of people who listen to the word of God. But only 25% put it into practice. I have explained what happens to each single category. Do you want to bear fruit? In 2019. If so, while you have your eyes closed, honestly, in which category do you belong? Do you belong to the first, the second, the third one, or the good soil? Hallelujah. I know how strong and intelligent you are. I know some of you have tried. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Father, in this place right now, would you forgive those who were offended? 
but kept resentment. Those who are holding on grudges, would you for, forgive them, Father? Would you forgive those who are hurt by their spouses? They have the heart full of resentment and unforgiveness. Father, would you forgive them? Some of us right now, as I'm talking, they need to forgive the, the people that are standing by them or to forgive the parents. Forgiveness is key for deliverance. Would you forgive right now without any condition in your heart so God can visit you? But some of us need to repent as well. Yes, receiving forgiveness is good, especially when it's free, especially when it has no condition. But would you repent? Would you repent in your, in your, in your heart? Father, forgive, oh Lord, forgive. Cause them to forgive so they can bear fruit. Father, cause us to live right. Cause us to cultivate the right soil. Cause us to understand, embrace, and make ours your words so we can have life and life abundantly. Thank you for visiting us today, Lord. Thank you. Thank you for speaking through me. I am confident that more than 25% received and more than 25%, they know now how to cultivate a good soil. They will be attentive to your seed, your word, because it contains life. They have received not only for themselves, but they received as well for their parents, for their neighbors, for their colleagues. 2019, we'll see a major change in how people live. Hallelujah. A measure. Continue to speak through us. Continue to empower us, Lord. So we bring to them your word. Father, keep the devil away. This word has been planted on good soil. The devil has no right to come and steal it. Devil, stay away. Stay away from this church. Stay away from this congregation. Stay away from our family members, Lord, our friends. Stay away. This word is life. Father, do not permit, in the name of Jesus, the devil to come and steal. Your word says, if you cultivate the right soil, you will not permit the devil to come and steal. If we put you first, you will not permit the devil to come and destroy. I thank you, Lord. And whoever has ears, hear. In the name of Jesus, Amen. If you receive, say hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. Amen. Give you praise, Lord.